all of the categories that are on the, on the right side show that in all of the developmental skills and developmental supports, they are all more positive for students that participate in after-school activities. And we also, I, sh I put up there one developmental challenge. This is mental distress. Students who participate in after-school activities show less mental distress than students who don't. Students who participate in after-school activities show more positive developmental skills and supports in all of them. And you can see that they're all relatively uniform. They're all positively increased. The top one is uh, commitment to learning, then it's social competence, uh, then it's uh, positive identity, and then the supports, being supported, teacher school support, and empowerment. I, I was asked by the mayor's office uh, this particular question. Does working after school affect after school participation? Well, of students in St. Paul, 31% reported to work at least one hour a week. These are in grades 8 to 11. Of those kids that work at least one hour a week, 22% of them work more than 10 hours a week. So here's the real clincher. Of those students working, 77% participate in after school activities. Of those not working, 70% participate in after school activities. So does working affect after school participation? Well, not in St. Paul. And I did look at the numbers statewide. Uh, the numbers aren't quite as big, but those working still participate at a higher rate in after school activities than those that are not working. Uh, there's another community in our schools that is often invisible. And questions are now being sought on the survey because for the first time we're asking questions about sexual orientation. So here's a picture of uh, five areas, mental distress, empowerment, social competence, positive identity, and commitment to learning. For students that are identifying as questioning their sexual orientation, that's the green bar. Gay or lesbian, that's the red bar. Or bisexual, that's the blue bar. And we see uniformly students who uh, report non-heterosexual uh, orientation have significantly higher levels of mental distress. That is a full standard deviation higher or more than students who, are, who report to be heterosexual. They also report much, much lower levels of empowerment, social competence, positive identity, and commitment to learning. And these differences are bigger than any of the racial or ethnic differences for this particular community. It's another community that, that uh, is often invisible and perhaps not supported uh, very well. What about post high school plans? This is the really uh, interesting thing that I just can't talk about enough. So here the gold bars are where students say, I will complete high school. I will complete high school. Look at where those gold bars are. They are within 1% from 100%. If we were able to support the goals of our own students, we should have a graduation rate in the state of 99%. And we struggle to get to 80%. And in some communities, we can't even get to 50%. And there's one community that we know of that's far less than 50%. But look at every group here. American Indian, Asian, Black, Native Hawaiian, White, multiple race group, Latino, Somali, and Hmong. They report that they will finish high school. Not to mention the proportions that report that they will go on and get some post-secondary credential well above 60% for most of them. The American Indian group is the one that's a bit lower. Uh, and, and we could see why in some of their profiles with respect to positive identity and, and social competence. The only other group that um, is, sort of presents a little bit of a difference is uh, Somali youth. Somali youth is the only group that doesn't get to the 99% that I will finish high school. And it's among the, the males in 11th grade. The males in 11th grade tend not to report such a high level of I will complete high school. So they're doubting their ability to complete high school at a little bit higher level than, than any other group. Uh, but it's not, that, it's not that much. You see the, I don't know if you can tell, Somali group is just a little bit further away from the 
So this is a picture and a profile of uh, our, our youth in Minnesota. And it's a, a picture that we need to uh, understand a little bit more, but then take advantage of. Because each one of these things are sort of leverage points. Uh, points that we, we can continue to build on and understand the strengths that students are bringing to their families, schools, and communities, and the kinds of supports that uh, perhaps they need.